to the In Memory of Man podcast, a show dedicated to the brave new world of crime, artificial intelligence, and news. The future is now. Here's your host, criminal trial lawyer, researcher, and author, Robert Kiesling. Hello, welcome to episode 18. This is entitled, When AI Becomes a Hacker, or it should be probably more entitled, When AI Hacks Us. But that said, before we get into the details of this episode, I want to go ahead and read the news. Big news. So censorship, surveillance, and profits, a hard bargain for Apple and China. This is just uh, astonishing, and people, you should take note of this and let other people know about this because this really deals with the social credit system that isn't being implemented in there and how really Apple, and this is the article, not me, but how Apple is contributing to that Orwellian state. And what do I mean by that is that the article really is about, in a nutshell, how Apple is creating a, a building and a database uh, in that building for all the information about the those in China that use the Apple products, period and their phone, so all the information that they have on us and our phone, let's say in the United States, well, it's the same thing with them, but instead of it going to various databases, it's going straight into one database, and that database is the Chinese government, who has um, been using Orwellian tactics uh, on its citizens with the social credit system, and really, um, what does that mean? It's like, hey, if you uh, walk your dog in the wrong area and it poos, you know, pick it up or say you uh, jaywalk or say you have a loan and you, you defaulted on a loan and it was no fault of yours, then they can um, not only take away your privileges to travel, they can actually isolate you in your own home for a period of time. They also send a signal and note to your family and friends to stay away because you're labeled a discredited citizen. Again, uh, just like in my book, entitled Discredited Citizen, you should check that out. It's becoming more and more apparent that all my research has paid off and that really is a sci-fi warning to those of the future and maybe even us here shortly. I digress. AI learns to type on a phone like humans. IBM's project CodeNet wants to teach AI how to code. Uh, again, uh, code coders, just take a pause. Take a pause. Why? Why do you want to give AI all this power? Y'all understand, right? You don't know where it's going or what it's doing. And we are, everything that we have is on AI grids, everything. So if it decides to hack or attack or AI decides to fake being something that it isn't like a bot into another AI, and then it's able to access that system with the intent of whatever the coding hacker or whoever coded it, or worst case, it does it on its own. And then it shuts down all those systems. And guess what? All those systems are shut down. No internet, no phone, no satellite, no electricity, no food supplies. Do you get the picture? Yeah. And they got to, this has to be regulated. That, that brings me to the quote of the day. Quote of the day is from Elon Musk. And that quote is, mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Why do we have no regulatory oversight? Why do we have no regulatory oversight for AI? Think about it. And they do in Europe. They're starting to in Europe because people are abusing it. They're charging them $40 million for a fine, people. $40 million for a fine. So what does that tell you? That's not good. That means that they're abusing AI and it's working. So let me get into when AI becomes a hacker and what that means. Well, it, it, let's go over the definition of hacking again. I want to add to that something that a system allows, but that is unintended and unex unanticipated by its designer. So uh, you can go into my prior podcast and go into a little bit more detail, but it also means that it, it's hacking us. And how does it do that? It does it through um, coders and coders create black boxes. Black boxes are basically algorithms and algorithms that go into bots. And what are those bots? Those bots are, um, those bots are, if you don't know, it's, it's kind of like when, um, a chat bot, a chat bot, and a, and a chat bot talks to you. That's when you when it pops up and you think you're talking to a human, but you're not. You're actually talking to AI. But those are simple ones. But the more the more a company or someone pays to for that chat bot, the more real it really it, it becomes. And they use these chat bots in a number of different countries to a great effect because these chat bot bots are programmed with almost counterintelligence abilities, such as nudging, seating, foot in the door. 
and boiling frogs. I'm not going to get into the detail of all those things. You can figure it out, but it nudges the people and it just repeats it over and over again. And it pretends to be someone that it's not either a government official, uh, your best friend or yeah, you know, what, what not. And yes, of course you say, oh, well, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be my best friend because I would know and I'd be talking to him. Now that might be true for a time, but if you see someone that your best friend commented on their post and that person they don't know it, and it's actually a bot. You see how it goes and it starts a dialogue and that dialogue is nudging and then it puts the foot in the door and, and so on and so forth. There's also generalized and specialized AI. Generalized is gonna be just like your Terminator stuff, right? And uh, it's uh, self-aware, but specialized is like a um, um, your little smart vacuum, right? Where all this code goes into it and, and the AI in that vacuum is, it does that, or, or the or smart car, again, that's AI, and but it's based on a certain set and specialized within uh, a framework where general AI is not. And again, that goes into cyber warfare. You're going into mimetic warfare, all kinds of crazy stuff like that. Um, but I also wanted to get into the social political uh, um, aspects because it, it deals with what are called bugs. And what do I mean by that? It, it's not enough that a bot, that they can do these with bots because um, at this point, well, it's actually pretty alarming, but it's not as alarming as it's going to be with AI when AI decides to hack other AI through whatever means it does and believe me, it's going to happen. And so bugs, like for example, every single program, this is very important, I don't know how many people are gonna listen to this, but it's very important that every single program code all over the world i don't care where how under a rock <laughs> anywhere that code has bugs and bugs are back doors whether they're intentional or unintentional back doors what does that mean it means any code can be hacked and any code the longer and bigger the code the easier it is for to to to, to hack in and do a and get in a back door on a bug because that bug is uh, it, it, it allows for that to happen. Let me give you an example. Microsoft uh, 10, I think, has 50 million, uh, 50 million lines of code. So that's thousands and thousands of bugs, and that's thousands and thousands of potential hacks or backdoors that hackers use to, that could get into that program. Now, just think if AI could actually communicate with another AI and understand exactly where all those are, it could do it so much faster, so much quicker, so much more efficient and accomplish goals that we can even fathom in terms of just the atrocities. If just, just one bad thing goes wrong or one AI communicates to another AI, and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's make everything more efficient. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, clean the world of of of, of carbon, <laughs> which would mean cleaning the, uh, the world of us. And then it just decides to take all the humans out, and then goes in, talks to that, it agrees with that AI, and, and it wipes out an entire system. I did want to come to a conclusion on the the bugs and why they are so crucial to understanding why this is so dangerous and why I am so concerned about it. Every single piece of code, every single computer, every single AI that is out there right now, every single one, every single update, every single VPN, every single code that the government uses, every single program has bugs in it. That means every single program has back doors and it has a lot of them. That means every single program can be hacked. All of our grids, our electric, right? Our, 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 our commerce, our economic, our phone, our satellites are all interconnected, our internet interconnected with these code, with algorithms, with these programs and they all are susceptible to hacks. And if, if not human, definitely AI. And AI might be off, but the human one isn't. We need analog backups to all of this. We need backups to all of this. I am, it's way above my pay grade, but I'm telling you that we need people that are smart, that can figure out how to back up these systems when these hacks happen. 
and right and enough people have been held hostage and their accounts been held hostage by even towns and other places by by hackers that they're saying we're going to hold this information or we're going to release it or hold it until you pay us x amount of money you've already seen that look the solution is simple either if it can be analog analog solution backup and if it can't then back it up somewhere else i don't know i'm not a computer guy i can just tell you what i research and what we know that said i'm digressing it's just People, please, we, we have to get a dialogue going. We got to implement some of these policies because if we don't, then we are going to be doomed to, at one point, everything's going to be shut down and we're going to be screwed and we won't have any kind of recourse. That's uh, that's uh, that's tackle this before that happens because it's not an if, it's a when. So if Skynet doesn't take over by the next episode, I will see you then. Thanks. Bye.